many people, they, they go crazy trying to achieve it, and they do everything they can to find it. I'm talking about power, and that's what we're talking about today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Henry. And I'm Janice. And this is Bible Discovery TV, a television program taking you through the Bible. And today we land at a passage of Mark that talks about power. That's a very interesting one. Also, Ryan is here. Ryan, what's up? Well, today I'm talking about Elijah, Elisha, John the Baptist, and Jesus. What do these men have in common? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about. I look forward to that. That looks like it's good. What about you, Janice? What are you doing? I want to talk about watching Jesus. And a special guest is joining us later on, our good friend Jim Cantillon. All right, very good. We'll talk to Jim about some of the things that we're doing together and all of that. It's going to be great. And get your Bible guide out and turn to today's passage because this is a good one. Your Bible also, the most important book of all. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Step forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. I'm looking at October 1st, and one of the most important events on the Jewish calendar is celebrated beginning sundown, September 29th, nightfall, to October 1st, 2019. Happy Rosh Hashanah! In other words, Happy Jewish New Year. Rosh Hashanah is packed with mitzvahs, that is, moral deeds performing within a religious duty special foods and traditions to bring the Jewish New Year in. During Jesus Christ's ministry on earth, he taught a new time and new season to the people that began a following known as, you ready for it? Here's what they were called, the way, people of the way. Now that, that's what became the church. Now the book of Mark is quick to point out and is believed to be written that the Apostle Peter spoke these so that Peter's memories were recorded. Now Mark knew that the people needed to know what happened, when and why. So he preserved it in writing. The Constitution, you know, a lot of people talk about this. The Constitution of the United States of America is a written document dated to more than 200 years ago. And people don't doubt its origin. But you know, the biblical book of Mark was written within 35 years of Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago. And I don't think we should challenge that as well. Now that's something to think about as we consider studying this book and as we consider Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. This is interesting. As we focus on that, there's only one way to title this particular message today as we focus on Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. A short piece of verbiage here that's absolutely fascinating. It's called the power. A lot of people are looking for power. People have bankrupt themselves going after power, spent all their money going after power. You know, I'm going to go after power. I'm going to spend their life going after power. Never seem to achieve it. What is power? Get your Bible guides in your Bible and turn to today's passage as we begin. By the way, do you have a Bible guide? Why not? If you don't have a Bible guide, write to us and we'll send you one. Use the addresses on the bottom of the screen. My only suggestion would be consider, pray about it, and send a donation in any amount so the Lord will speak to you, and that's great. 
So send a donation in any amount, or you can go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com, a new website designed just for your, um, just for your approval and use, user and all that. You can watch the program there. You can watch the programs from the past, or you can get a Bible guide or whatever. But just make, do a favor for me and, and make a donation in any amount, whatever God speaks to you, that will help us tremendously. The power, Mark 3, Father, I pray today, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would show us your way, teach us your path, because we need to know. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we all said together, amen. Now, when we focus on this, it gets very interesting. Look at chapter 3 right now. Here is what the Bible says. And he, that is Jesus Christ, entered the synagogue, the gathering place, again. Jesus Christ entered the gathering place again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. Really? That's interesting. So they watched him closely, whether Jesus Christ would heal him on the Sabbath, on the seventh day, so that they might accuse him. Now, what's interesting about this is the Pharisees had no care for the condition of the man with the, with the withered hand. But they wanted Jesus. They wanted to accuse Jesus Christ. That's what they did. Now, if ever you've heard me say anything, hear me say this. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God himself, fully God and fully man, is the point of conflict. Jesus Christ is the point of conflict. And I want to tell you something. There are people that jump all over me when I get into Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ, here they're going to get mad at me again. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's God. And Jesus Christ is fully man. Fully God and fully, I can't explain it. I don't know how. There's lots of things I can't explain. Metabolism. I can't explain how I eat food and it's distributed in energy. I can't explain that, but I don't stop eating. Very important that we recognize there are many things that we don't understand, even with our vast wonder of science. That's nothing compared to God. And Jesus Christ is the conflict. So keep that in mind. Now let's go back to the scripture because this is Mark 3, chapter 3. It says, or chapter 3, verse 3, it says, and Jesus Christ said to the man who had the withered hand, he said, step forward, sir. And then he said to the man, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? Now, I want you to think about this question. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or evil, to save life? or to kill. Jesus Christ asked them that question, but they kept silent. Now listen carefully to the point. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, kept, the, kept silent when Jesus Christ challenged them. Why? Only God knows what is in the heart and the mind of someone. We do not know. I don't know. And you don't know. We don't know. But God knows. God knows exactly and that's the amazing thing about God. There's so many things that he knows we don't know. He's so much bigger than our mind, so much bigger than our reason. Yet he says in Isaiah 1, come let us reason together to Isaiah. God is challenging us to come and learn from him. Isn't that amazing? But we need to understand that God knew exactly what the Pharisees were thinking. We didn't. We got, to, we got to get to this next part because this is great. Mark 3, verse 5 and 6. It says, And when he had looked around at them with anger, he was mad, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts. Jesus Christ was grieved by their hardness. Then Jesus Christ said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And you know what happened? And his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees, they went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians, those people who thought that Messiah would come through the Herodians, 
against him, how they might destroy him. Can you believe that? They were not interested the man was healed. You see, the Pharisees wanted power. And when it was threatened, that power, they pushed against Jesus Christ. And there are some who do not want actual healing, but they only want the power of healing. Are you somebody like that? Well, my advice to you is don't be. Uh Uh-uh, don't be. Because if you desire healing and you need the healing, then pray because it is Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit who heals you. No man, there's not a man on the planet, doesn't matter if he's a faith healer or not, doesn't matter. There's not a man who can heal you, but there's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ can heal you and Jesus Christ has healed many and continues to heal people. And so beloved, we need to understand And we need to pray today. And as we pray, we need to think this through. Lord, you are great. I thank you and I thank your Holy Spirit inside of me for helping me and for healing me today. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we said together, amen. We just want to say thank you to our partners who've helped us all get this far and continue to do so. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to us. As we begin to read through the Gospel of Mark, it's worth a few minutes to step back from the content of the book itself and look at its origins, its history and authorship. This will hopefully give us a good place from which to start and understand this ancient record of the life of Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at Corey's segment. Appearing second in our modern Bible, the Gospel of Mark is actually believed to have been written first. As with the other Gospels, Mark does not name its author within the main text. However, all of history and church tradition unanimously claim one author. John Mark. Seven surviving early church documents claim Mark as author and add that he was the student and interpreter of the Apostle Peter, as well as an associate of Paul. The earliest written witness we have describes Mark writing all that Peter taught about Jesus' teachings, and that Mark was not as concerned with recording chronological sequence as he was concerned with being accurate and fully recording what Peter taught. John Mark appears several times in the New Testament itself. In Acts, it is to John Mark's mother's home that Peter goes after he is miraculously freed from prison. Unfortunately, Mark is probably best known for having a broken friendship with Paul. Lesser remembered is how they did reconcile. Some modern protests to Mark being the author of the Gospel claim that the author couldn't have been Jewish, as John Mark was, because there are too many Latinisms in the Gospel. It's altogether too Roman. A Jewish man would never have written it. This forgets, of course, that Mark wrote his Gospel in Rome for the Roman Christians. Audience dictates style in many cases. Another common protest is that Mark is too critical of the Twelve Disciples, especially of Peter. And yet, it is exactly Peter from whom we would expect to see self-criticism. It's unlikely that someone writing without the authority of a disciple would drag these founders of the church through the mud. John Mark's relative obscurity and seeming unimportance in the early church paired with his controversial split with Paul, makes him an unlikely person to credit with writing an authoritative gospel. Unless, of course, he really did write it. Thanks, Corey, for that segment. Well, you know, yesterday we read in Mark chapters 1 and 2 about John the Baptist and how he prepared the way for Jesus Christ. And we know from scripture that John was a type of Elijah. But what are we to make of Elijah's equally famous understudy, Elisha? Is there a parallel between Elisha and anybody else in the New Testament? Let's study. One of the most famous and fascinating people of the Bible is the prophet Elijah. 
In fact, the New Testament speaks of Elijah more than any other Old Testament prophet. He also appears at the transfiguration of Christ and is probably one of the coming two witnesses mentioned in the book of Revelation. The account of Elijah's life as well as his understudy, Elisha, are recorded in the books of the kings. Both Elijah and Elisha performed several great miracles. Indeed, Elijah suspended the rain for three and a half years, raised a widow's son from the dead, called fire down from heaven on Mount Carmel after 850 of Jezebel's Canaanite prophets failed to do so, and defeated the 450 priests of Baal, just to name a few. Ironically, Elijah is the only prophet in the Bible who asked God to take his life, yet in the end does not die at all. Instead, he was fed twice by an angel and continued his journey to Mount Sinai, where he had a unique encounter with God. It was only after these things that Elijah, like Enoch, was translated. Before he's translated, however, Elisha asks the prophet for a double portion of his spirit to come upon him. Why? As one Bible scholar observes, Elijah is one of the most fantastic prophets in the scripture, and Elisha not only wants to follow in his footsteps, he wants a double portion, perhaps to be twice as good. Is it a mere coincidence then that Elijah did eight recorded major miracles, but Elisha did 16? Also, Elisha, while he was a very powerful prophet in his own right, had a very different style. He mixed with people. Most of his acts were healing acts. His words were gentle. Almost all of his actions had to do with life rather than death. In fact, his motto could have been the resurrection life. For these reasons, some see a parallel between Elisha and Christ. The Bible leaves no question about the parallel between Elijah and John the Baptist. Indeed, the final words that conclude the Old Testament in Malachi 4 are God's, saying, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. 400 years later, the New Testament opens with the coming of John the Baptist in the spirit of Elijah. John proclaimed that the one who was coming after him was mightier than he. Perhaps then, just as Elijah paralleled John, Elisha paralleled the future Messiah. Now, I have to say that this was an absolutely fascinating study for me. The possibility of Elisha paralleling Christ is very, very intriguing. Now, that being said, it's not something to be dogmatic about because, well, the Bible doesn't come out and say it. But I do find it interesting that Elisha received a double portion of Elijah's spirit and was, in a sense, greater. Although Elijah is also regarded as one of the most powerful prophets of the Bible. Now, similarly, Jesus said of John that no one born of women was greater than John but John also proclaimed Jesus to be mightier than himself. It's something to consider for sure. It is, and of course, remember that Elisha was more of a pastoral prophet, mm -hmm. where Elijah was always dramatic and big and everything else was, you know, and he kind of stayed away. So that's kind of interesting. Exactly, yeah. As you parallel those two and look at both of them. So, mm -hmm. And John is a really interesting uh, character. As I said, I mean, he's real, but I mean, he he was very unique. Yeah, and, he was. Uh, baptized people and did Absolutely. crazy things. Very interesting. What'd you do, Jen? Well, we have Mark chapter 3, and uh, the program was called The Power today. And we see the account of the man who had the withered hand being healed by Jesus on the Sabbath. Now, that might not sound like a big deal to us, healing on the Sabbath, but it was to a certain group. And we can assume here that it was the Pharisees who were watching him. And verse 2 says, So they watched him, Jesus, closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath. So they had no doubt that Jesus could heal. They knew that he could. Mm -hmm. They were just watching to see if he would. And I think that's an interesting portion to just capture there because how many times do we miss the plan that Jesus has and the works that Jesus does because we're so stuck in our own rut. So I think it's a good thing to just focus today on the way we progress and the way we see Jesus in his ministry because Jesus never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the miracles that he did here is he's still doing and accomplishing here, but oftentimes we miss out on those, on those things. Because we are struggling, and again, there's a lot of people who struggle for power and they struggle to for control. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about control, well, control, and, control. And, and they, they didn't dispute that Jesus had the power. It didn't no. say here they were watching to see if he could. It said they, they were watching to see if he would That's right. heal. And so they, they had no doubt, but they were watching for the wrong thing. They missed out. 
they missed out on the miracle because they were so stuck in what they believed and what they thought. All the people that uh, Jesus Christ healed, he healed them for a reason, and the reason was for them. And uh, the, but the Pharisees and the Sadducees and everybody, they saw the reason for power, power, power. So it's very interesting. That's one of the aspects. I have a, a guest, and I am very excited because he does Jim Canalon's commentary, and these are some of the things he's written, and uh, they are Canalon's casual commentary yeah. from Matthew 1. Thank you, Jim, for being here. Mm -hmm. And... It's his birthday. It's his well, birthday not today. Not only yeah, is yeah. he here, yeah. but it's not a it's day over birthday. 47. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that <laughs> myopic lie. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I receive it. I receive it. Anyway, uh, Jim, you do a program called Jim Canalon's uh, show. Jim Cannon. Jim Cannon today. Cannon today. Hello, hello. And, Ron. Yeah, I can't. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's wrong? Anyway. He's just so uh, glad to have you here. He just know, doesn't need But you do this program say. where you teach through yeah. the Gospels. Yeah. And this commentary, there was one more here from Mark, but you've done all of Matthew mm -hmm. and you've done Mark, but you interview somebody as well. Now, you're enjoying doing this program. I am. And um, what's interesting to me is the Gospels, really. Yeah, well, you know, uh, at this advanced age that I am now <laughs> celebrating today, I'm not sure if I'm celebrating or mourning, but, um, you know, I've, I've been in the ministry for 50 years, uh, and I've planted churches, uh, I've, I've done missionary work, I've, you know, I'm, I'm, even for the last 20 years, I'm still involved very heavily in Africa and India. Um, but my... My interest, as the Lord has kind of been developing me, has become increasingly Jesus and the Gospels. Uh, I appreciate Paul. I appreciate um, John. Uh, I appreciate you know the the epistles uh, of the New Testament, uh, Pauline theology, eschatology, all of those things. But I think the Lord has made it clear to me that what He wants me to do, because of my television program especially, is just focus on Jesus. And so that's Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke slash Acts, because Acts is chapter, or volume two of, of Mark, uh, of Luke, and then John. So uh, I've decided, this, is, uh, this sounds a little bit arrogant, but I, I want to be a gospel specialist. That's, that's really what I want to do. So I've been working at it now with uh, Jim Canalon today and writing uh, for a little over three years. I, I put them out in this, in this format like this uh, so that I could put them in, people's, in an envelope. You know, yeah. and, and mail it to people. People can put it in their pocket. Yeah, yeah. I'll put it in their pocket. They can put it in their purse, their back, whatever. Um, but it's, you know, it's it's uh, it's a casual commentary. I don't claim to be an academic, uh, but I'm well studied, and I, you know, I lived in Israel for seven years. So, uh, the local color, the culture, the language, all of these things are just, you know, second nature to me. And so I'm able to bring a perspective to the Gospels that is pretty unique. Uh, both on the show and then in the writing. And, and so that's, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I think that uh, it's important to remind people that they can see you uh, on the NRB channel. Yeah. And there's some other stations that might have you on as well. And uh, it, it, I, I really like the program. It's Thank very you. good. Thank you. You also interview people. Yeah. You know, what, what's that about? Well, I interview people who have a proven track record in ministry. You know, I spent many, many years, as you know, hosting 100 Huntley Street, terrific program. Uh, the, the essential bread and butter of that show was testimonials, people talking about what Jesus had done in their lives, which I thought was terrific. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, from time to time, and sometimes more than I would have liked, we'd have a lot of celebrity guests, you know, musicians, uh, uh, big itinerant speakers, you know, authors, and so on, which is fine. Uh, but I, I, I just... I want somebody who's got a proven track record, somebody who's been, been there, done that, and has proven over, over time to be faithful. And so there's more than enough guests like that available if you just dig a bit. So the people I interview on the program are people like that. Uh, I, I love interviewing. I, I, that's, that's one of my most enjoyable things is to interview people. Because I'm basically curious, you know. I like to ask good questions and listen carefully. But then, you know, the last 12 minutes of each show, I just get right into the Gospels. I got a little telestrator there, and I underline, and I make circles. And, <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it works. Your son Ryan here is, is my editor and, and, and director. Terrific job. Couldn't do it without him. Uh, so, you know, it's just, um, it's just a really, really happy place for me. 
So it's it's the kind of place that uh, that you want to be. Oh well, yeah. You know, at this stage again in my life, uh, I you know I've I've done the church planning, I've done the world traveling, I'm still doing that actually, but I, I more and more I just want to, uh, as Paul said of himself, I, I I've been called to proclaim the gospel. That's what that, that's my calling, and so to be able to do it with this very large um, platform. It's terrific, you know? Like a lot of my friends are retiring and playing golf every day. I say if life for me was golf every day, shoot me now. <laughs> <laughs> just, I am just not interested. You know, C.S. Lewis talked about his fear of just continuing, mm -hmm. merely continuing, mm -hmm. kind of hanging on from, for the next meal and hoping, you know, that I'll die a painless death, you know, somewhere mm -hmm. down the line. I don't want to just continue. If I'm going to do anything, I'll burn out. I'm not going to, mm -hmm. I'm not going to waste out, you know? On the next program, Jim, I want to talk about uh, your involvement in Africa. Yeah. Then we're going to talk about your involvement in India. Yeah. We're going to talk about your involvement around the world because you are doing some amazing things and we're helping you. Yes, you are. And uh, I think it, it becomes important for us to recognize that, and there's many people in Africa who watch this program, who are watching this program right now, mm. and it's very important that we understand the nature of the world in terms of the body of Christ. Yeah. We understand that, that the church is not just our church in the local community, but it's the church around the world. It's not a building, but it's people. And Jesus Christ has made that clear to us. So make sure you uh, make time to join us on the next program. We'll talk about that. But in the meantime, continue reading your Bible and continue praying because God is talking to you. The question is, are we listening? <laughs>